Hey kids, welcome to this interesting lesson in which now we take a look at the next important type of mutation that is we talk about the gene mutations. So are we trying to talk about mutations in the complete gene which is a segment of DNA? Yes. For example, let's say this is my gene that is a functional segment of DNA. This gene will be made up of nucleotides. We know what nucleotides are, right? We have seen this in the lower class. What exactly is the DNA and RNA structure? So these nucleotides are always present in a series. When I say one particular gene for one particular protein, that means it is having a series of amino acids. That means it is going to definitely have a series of codons. That is all the codons which are present in one particular sequence. What if this sequence changes for some reason? That exactly would define my genetic or gene mutations. Thus, I would define gene mutations as abrupt, sudden or what do you say unexpected changes in the complete segment of gene. And what kind of changes are we expecting here to happen? We can expect the complete nucleotide sequence. We can expect the small portion or series of codons being lost, series of codon being added, series of codon being substituted also. Yes, for example, A is substituted by G or something like that at one point or many codons together. All these kinds of abrupt random changes happening in the genes is what we are studying under gene mutations. So now let's take a simple example for this. Let's assume I take just one gene, yes, I am taking one strand of DNA, I am not taking the other. We know it is a double helical structure, but we just take an example of say A, T, G, C, G, C, T, T, A, G. Yes, for example, this is one sequence. Yes, I am not just pointing out the codons which are present. Let's assume, let's assume this is one sequence continuing together. Now in this, what are the possibilities that can happen? What kind of changes do you think can happen in this? One is, one changes, some part gets deleted. One changes, some part gets duplicated. One change is where some part is substituted by something else, correct? All these possibilities gets us to the types of gene mutations. So I would say the first type of gene mutation would be substitution. Substitution of what? What are we substituting? Can I substitute this G by either C or T or A? Yes, I can. I mean some kind of changes happening so that this G changes to something else. Now here let's assume this is changing to another A, this G getting changed to A, right? That means my purine is getting changed to another purine. Yes. What if this gets changed to a C? That means my purine gets changed to a pyrimidine, correct? So purines changing to purines will be one type, purines changing to pyrimidines and vice versa. Pyrimidines changing to pyrimidines or pyrimidines changing to purines will be another type. Correct? So two major types of substitution that we get which is transition and transversion. Yes, let's talk about the first one that is transition and then talk about transversion. Transition will be when my purine is replaced with another purine or pyrimidine changing to another pyrimidine. Yes, so same changes the same. Yes, so my purines getting changed with purines or pyrimidines changing to pyrimidines. Yes, that would be transition. Transversion will be exactly opposite. Purines changing to pyrimidines and vice versa, correct? 
that would be my substitution. Yes, this is where one or maybe two or more genes, uh, two or more, sorry, uh, what do you say, nitrogen bases are getting changed. That is substitution. What if, say, here itself, yes, what if the next possibility of inversion of a sequence takes place? For example, let's assume this portion, yes, this gets flipped. The sequence will turn out to be T, C and G. That means the complete sequence has now got changed, correct? So, I can have inversion at one or many places. Yes, inversion which is taking place now, similar to inversion, I can have because of inversion also, because of inversion also, there are changes in the sequence of amino acids. Now, because amino acids are changing, the protein produced will be different. That's the reason why sequence of amino acids will give rise to different type of protein. Hence, inversion is also important. So, next one will be my frame shift mutation. Frame shift. What kind of frame are we shifting here? Frame shift means the reading frame. When the enzyme is making amino acid, we know in the process of, we have taken a look in the lower class about the process of uh, RNA functions, that is transcription, translation in short. We know that the enzyme will come and sit here and try to read this frame in terms of codons, correct? So now, if this particular is my set of codons, G, C and T, what if there is one amino acid added in between? Yes, the frame, suppose if A is added over here, for example, let's assume I add A in this. So, instead of G, C, T, which is my normal frame, now my frame will be G, A, C, right? So, next frame will be T, T, A. Next frame will be something different. That means my complete frame has got shifted ahead. Also, second possibility is, what if, if this is not taking place, yes, there is no addition. Instead, I have another concept of removal of this. Again, my frame shifts to G, T, T. The enzyme does not know that there was some kind of nucleotide here. Here, we know that this was the nucleotide which has now got deleted. Again, the same thing. The frame has got shifted to one nucleotide ahead of it. Thus, we will have, again, two basic types of things. That is addition or simply called as insertion. Yes inserting of a new nucleotide, new one or two nucleotide because of which the frame has got shifted or we can have deletion taking place, correct? Because of which both of them giving rise to a change or a shift in the complete frame, Inver insertion or addition or deletion, correct? This was the third type. Now let us talk about the fourth type. Fourth type is very simple in which we either have nonsense mutations, I know it's funny, or we can also have missense mutations. That means what? That means certain changes, sometimes it can happen. There are certain stop codons also. Stop codon means now the enzyme when it is producing a particular type of protein, do you think it will go on reading the complete DNA till it ends? No, it will stop somewhere. Where is the gene stopping? The gene stops at a particular point where there are signals. These signals will be my stop codon. For example, when you say AUG is the beginning or the start codon. Similarly, you have UAA or so many of them which act as stop codon. So what if because of some kind of mutation or maybe just randomly in general, you have a stop codon in between. The enzyme will stop the synthesis there. Protein will not be produced. That gives rise to nonsense mutation. No sense absolutely, right? There is no kind of protein which is produced. So what's the use of the gene if it is not producing the protein, right? So nonsense mutation is where a stop codon interferes in between. Whereas miss sense will be where a codon, codon which is responsible or some kind of change such that a codon which is not responsible for producing any protein will be present in between. So again the protein chain either stops or some kind of amino acid chain is produced in which the protein made is not having a function. The protein is non-functional protein. It does not have any work. Thus it gives rise to something which we don't desire that is a protein having no functions. Correct? This was about the four different types of gene mutations which can occur. Gene mutations or changes in the genes, 
in the complete segment of the DNA is what we are talking about. In this, we can have four major types that is substitution, a purine by a pyrimidine or purine by purine or pyrimidine by pyrimidine. We can have inversion of the complete gene sequence. We can have shift in the frame of codons by either addition or deletion of these codons or we can have nonsense and missense mutations which occur in the complete segment of DNA, in the complete gene. These changes or these mutations are brought about by what? They are brought about by chemicals or they are brought about by certain radiations. Now these factors which will bring about mutations are called as mutagens. These mutagens range from the X-rays to the radio rays or to any kind of these you know rays around us to the certain chemicals, ultraviolet light, all of these factors can lead to formation of mutations inside our body inside the genes that we have. That's the reason why we usually prefer staying away from all these, right? UV light or from X-rays and all these rays, correct? These are basically the types of gene mutations that you find. These can either be spontaneously happening in us, right? Gene mutations can happen at any point of time. We don't know when they happen, right? So these mutations can either be spontaneous, yes, happening all of a sudden when we don't really know them, or they can also be induced in the particular organism. When we study genetics, when we study model organisms, we try to induce mutations in them to study what happens. That is where you give the organism an exposure to the mutagen and you carry out experiments. Thus, spontaneous and induced are the types of genetic mutations which you find and these are the ways in which the gene can change, giving rise to a complete different protein which can be non-functional or a defective protein in short. This was all about the concept of gene mutations that happen in the organisms. Now let's meet up in the next lesson where we talk about several types of genetic disorders. May it be chromosomal mutations or may it be genetic mutations. Let's try talking about all these problems, these disorders which you find in humans on a large scale. Thank you so much.